Hello, I'm Alex Jones, and I'm a radio and television host based in Austin, Texas. And for many years, I've been exposing the criminal activities of the global elite, also known as the New World Order. In past films, we've documented the centralization of power, the move towards world government, the attack on the nation state, self-defense, the Second Amendment, family values, that is, the family itself, as well as private property rights. But time and time again in my research, I come, well, eye to eye with something that's even hard for me to believe. And that's that the elite, again, the so-called establishment kings, uh, those that know best, the visions of the anointed ones, are obsessed with the occult from presidents to governors to the heads of industry. We've all seen the stories of presidents and first ladies obsessed with their astrologers making national policy decisions upon their recommendations. Spiritual guides, shamans in the White House. My friends, it gets far worse than that. Now, I personally am a Christian, but even an atheist should be concerned about the information we're about to bring forward in this new documentary film. The Dark Secrets Inside Bohemian Grove. You see, for over 120 plus years in Northern California, in Sonoma County, on a 2,700 acre secluded redwood grove, leaders from around the world, prime ministers, chancellors, presidents, governors, again, the heads of industry, banking, academia, the media, Hollywood, only a select few, a little over 2,000 people, travel there to engage in bizarre, ancient, Canaanite, Luciferian, Babylon, mystery religion ceremonies. At least that was the rumors. And so I went to the library and got on the internet and saw many of the mainstream news articles admitting that world leaders do indeed go there and they fly into San Francisco uh, and other surrounding cities and drive out into the rural uh, hills and mountains of Northern California and that these stories have been coming out that they worship some 45-foot stone owl god. And then I began to uh, read some of the documentation on this Moloch character of the Old Testament, mentioned many times in Leviticus. That's in the Bible. Why are world leaders traveling to the middle of nowhere to worship this thing? Well, I had to check it out for myself. And I'm proud of my team, Mike Hansen, Violet Nichols. They traveled with me there. We talked to some of the locals discreetly. We successfully infiltrated with the help of some of the locals and Channel 4, World of Wonder, uh, British television that teamed up with us. And uh, I successfully infiltrated through the Secret Service, uh, through the guards, through the Sonoma County Sheriff's Department. We were inside four hours. That's only one day out of the two weeks that they meet there for the admitted summer fire festival of the Bohemian Club. Well, basically that's enough for me. Uh, it's, it's hard to even describe it with words. And I hope that our hidden cameras uh, can give you at least a small piece of what I witnessed. To have world leaders engaging in this type of sickening behavior Oh yes, there's much more to come. Mock human sacrifices, they claim, just shocks the very foundations of what Americans believe their leaders to be. And then to have it intimately connected with world government, it doesn't make a lot of sense until you research history. All throughout history, spanning back into the mist of the beginnings of civilization, we see world leaders uh, from the empires of old, from the Aztec kings and priests uh, to Babylonian leaders to ancient Rome engaging in twisted behavior. Could it be that when you have all the power and all the women and all the money and all the lands and all the art, you have to do something new. You have to go against the basic grain of humanity. You have to get off in a sick way. That's what we witnessed in Northern California, July 15th, 2000. Get ready to go inside the Bohemian Grove. The 
Bohemian Club, as it's known today, was founded in 1873 in San Francisco in Northern California. Many of the club's original annals, dating back to before the turn of the century, admit that local artists, writers, newspapermen, you name it, wanted a place away from the so-called backwardsness of the West Coast, the Judeo-Christian ethic. They found that place an hour and a half north of San Francisco, outside of the tiny town of Monterio. Their annals even admit an obsession with the occult and what they called druid rituals. Amongst the great redwood trees, they revived ancient ceremonies that in truth had their roots not in the druids, but in Babylon itself. As the railroads brought commerce and larger and larger populations, the prestige of the club grew until in the year 2000, it is a gathering place for the world establishment, the elite. We're about to show you some of the key evidence documenting this. It is absolutely central to understand that these bizarre activities have been engaged in going back to 1873 and are not some new fanciful whim of the trendies on the West Coast. By the turn of the century, there was already a 10- to 15-year waiting list. Presidents from Howard Taft to Herbert Hoover were on the membership roster. Not to mention, later, famous war general Dwight D. Eisenhower, later to become president. The roster of the Bohemian Club reads like a who's who of the elite. Look at this photo taken inside the Grove back in 1963. There you'll see Ronald Reagan. And sitting two people over from him, later to become president, Richard Milhouse Nixon. Frankly, we don't know if these men actively enjoy the things that go on inside the Bohemian Club. But one thing is perfectly certain from the evidence. They are forced to go and attend and take part in these activities if they wish to be elevated to the highest levels of the geopolitical power structure. Take George Bush Sr., documented member. And then, of course, there's his son. Now, the last four generations of Bushes have also attended the Skull and Bone Society at Yale, well known to be steeped in the occult. Then there's Bill Clinton, a frequent attendee. Upon closer inspection, the entire federal government at the highest levels is infested with Bohemian Club members. And it doesn't stop there. America's private run-for-profit Federal Reserve Bank, from its very inception in 1913, has been run by prominent members of the Bohemian Club. Central Bank Chairman Alan Greenspan was seen leaving the Bohemian Grove only one month before he was appointed Chairman of the Federal Reserve. He had to be a made man, to be a member of the most powerful cabal on the planet. Historical records are clear for major universities. The Manhattan Project was planned and instituted and run from the Bohemian Club. All of this going on in an atmosphere of bizarre revelry. You're looking at an illustration from a November 1989 issue of Spy Magazine. Spy goes undercover with Henry Kissinger, Merv Griffin, and William F. Buckley, Jr., the story was clearly a shill meant to misdirect the intensifying media coverage that the Grove was getting in the late 1980s. The writer's spin is obvious. They're just masters of the universe, big frat boys blowing off steam. We'll get back to this article later. Because you can clearly see that the mantra in the spin story has been picked up as a front by all the local media. Sure, they're elitist. Sure, they have some bizarre rituals. But what's the big deal? They're just having fun. If that was the case, why would David Gergen, presidential advisor to President Clinton, resign from the Bohemian Club and 17 other organizations when it was revealed in 1993? Organizations like the Trilateral Commission, the Council on Foreign Relations, the Bilderberg Group. But it's not just the Washington Times and the Sacramento Bee. You're looking at an illustration from the pages of Parade Magazine, February 22, 1981. This story was the most accurate and revealing, detailing the so-called mock human sacrifice. Former German Chancellor Helmut Schmidt wrote extensively in his memoirs, Men and Powers, a Political Retrospective, goes into great detail about the secret establishment running the world. The Trilateral Commission, the CFR, 
the Bilderberg Group, and of course, ladies and gentlemen, the Bohemian Grove, a place that he often talked about being a, well, a wonderful hideaway, a place to spend time with Nelson and David Rockefeller and to talk about world government and steering societies. On page 225 of Men in Powers, he talks about it being one of the most astounding places he had ever visited in the United States and how that feeling intensified over the years with subsequent visits. The book goes on for page after page discussing the corporate, private, governmental infrastructure of world government. Going back to the Spy Magazine spin piece, they have lots of rosy illustrations of drunken establishment types dancing around having fun with the rituals going on in the background. They even admit that they wear bizarre Ku Klux Klan style robes. And there's even a photo released by the Grove of the ritual being engaged in. They talk about the incredible security surrounding the Grove. And they even admit that a corpse, a sacrifice, is born across the lake. But it's all in good fun. We did massive research on the occult. And one of the libraries we visited was that of Professor Tex Mars of Aeronautics. He also has written literally dozens of books on the occult. His library was very revealing about the obsession of elitists throughout history with the occult. Uh, front group after front group to conceal and, and really subvert. Uh, but behind all of these groups, there is a small uh, cadre or uh, elite, a core. And what you have done, I think, with uh, the Bohemian Grove is you have exposed one of the premier organizations of the whole New World Order uh, arrangement, you might say. Uh, of course, we can go back in history, all the way back to ancient Egypt, Babylon, or Greece, Rome. And I think you're going to see sort of the roots of the uh, Bohemian Grove, but particularly in the Illuminati uh, era, uh, originating during the French Revolutionary days. You know, there we had the actual order of the Illuminati, with Adam Weishaupt and all of his uh, evil uh, philosophers, let's just call them, uh, Voltaire and the others. And uh, that has come up all the way to today. Hitler, of course, was a bohemian. I think it's more Babylon mystery religion. Uh, all of the elements are, are there. Uh, of course, even the owl is a symbol of ancient mystery Babylon. Uh, the owl was worshipped uh, by the uh, ancient Egyptians and by the Babylonians. Uh, and it's interesting to me uh, that many of the members of the Bohemian Grove have in their homes, as I understand it, small figurines of owls. And I believe they actually worship those owls as a symbol of the deity, the great goddess uh, of Babylon. And of course, here again, we have the counterfeit of Christ's sacrifice uh, on the cross. I think all of those things, there, there had to be, in my belief, a, an occultist, a deep occultist, who designed each of the elements of this ceremony. It wasn't just a bunch of guys sit together at a bar and said, hey, let's have a good time, the cremation of care, uh, and why don't we do this or that. I believe it was purposely designed, each element in its turn, uh, for, for what they did. No doubt about it. After landing in San Francisco at the International Airport, we traveled through the city, across the Golden Gate Bridge, into deeper Northern California. Northern California, home to the giant Sequoia Redwoods. From there north to Santa Rosa, going west on Highway 12, the gateway to Bohemian Grove. We spent the first night in Santa Rosa, 
before getting up early in the morning and traveling into the town of Occidental where we were going to meet the British media and start our investigation. Well, here we are in Northern California, right outside the Bohemian Grove. Mmm. The fruits of nature. But I'll tell you this, I don't worship it and sacrifice things to it. Let's go find out what's going on. Yeah. Well, here we are, folks. Turning on to the Bohemian Highway and Bohemian Grove. We're going to find out what in the New World Order is going on here. <laughs> Thank you, Park. No, I tell you, it was, it's beautiful out here during the day, but it is spooky at night. I don't know if you guys got some footage of it, all the, all the fog and the rest of it. Tell you, are you excited? Oh, yeah. I've got a map. You guys want to look at that? My question is, what, the history, what do they do if they catch you in there? They have us killed. I doubt that. Skin. <laughs> Alive. I, I doubt, doubt that. I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. It's dark. It's skin and body. Hanging uh, upside down. Redwood tree. <laughs> I doubt that. <laughs> no, we'll see. No, I think they'll just check this out. What about me? Because I'm a woman. I can't really sneak in, can I? I mean, you I, can't go I can't. You can't. Yeah. You've got to stay. I've got to stay. Yeah. I've got to stay behind in the spooky Occidental Lodge. <laughs> I have no problem. There is a road. If I can be shown a way to insert myself into this with Hanson. Uh, and, but then I know where the cremation of care, what day they're supposed to do it, where this pond is. Tomorrow night at dusk. I'm not going to end up tied down on a pentagram with, with uh, Henry Kissinger's fat belly hanging over while he's naked with a big dagger, am I? <laughs> I just want to make sure that's a joke. <laughs> just a thought. It's very... well, like Governor Bush, Governor Bush running around in a pink tutu, foaming at the mouth with a purple wig on. Am I? No. <laughs> Supposedly, I hear that's what they do. So <coughs> I don't know. I think they, I think they do do these things. But the question is, why? And these power brokers, which bomb innocent countries and slaughter people and you know, pump the food chain full of garbage and just everything else they do, it's and probably something fun for them. And they really get off on being bad little boys. And rule the world. I mean, this is, for some, for some people, this is the secret room. Well, I mean, certainly in the whole class system, it, it's the pleasures of class. And now what class is, the power that you have is something different. And to me, I mean, from my research of Bohemian Grove, and you guys have obviously done more, I've read a lot of mainstream articles, alternative, talked to people, talked to some guests. It's really where people go in there to do whatever they want to do. So there are probably people sitting around fishing and probably people sitting around doing something completely different. Okay, there's the stage. Right, that's where the talks happen. Because they've got this amphitheater. Amphitheater. And, um... And they have these kind of talks, and this is where George Bush gets talks, and people like that, on this, on this stage. Oh, look, there's the lake. There you go. Lakeside talks. There's the lake. There's the shrine. See? Mm -hmm. Right there. That's where. Honey, come get a shot of this. Now, where's this river? This is near the Russian River. Can you see it? Now, see, here's the, here's the shrine of, the, of, the, of their devil owl, um, which they even admit has its roots in, like, Babylon and the Druids had them and everything else. So all over the world, this this weird owl shows up. Some cultures they've thrown children inside this, inside the bowels of this burning owl. Um, that's historical. We've all read in the Bible about throwing your children to, to idols, uh, inside their. You know. So I, it's weird behavior, definitely. So it needs to be investigated. And plus, it gets the adrenaline out. Thrill seekers have to have more. But uh, here you go, honey. Right here, at the shrine. You can zoom in on that, Mike. I'm saying honey to my girlfriend Violet, not, <laughs> not Mike here. <laughs> We're getting real bohemian now, aren't we? Uh, this is, uh... honey, we can get a close shot right here. Mm -hmm. But it did sound like that she's definitely leftward leaning. But then we get into the whole semantical debate about is there a left and a right, and to me there really isn't. There's a command and control on one end and an anarchy on the other, and I want to be on the middle of the real spectrum. Certainly got to have some control in a, in a complex society and civilization.
<clears throat> but um, all the all the developments I see are pretty bad uh, towards towards dehumanization. And now you got the UN demanding everybody sign on to this international criminal court. Um, and they're telling the U.S. if we don't sign on, it won't matter if 60 countries ratify, we'll be under its control. I mean, we're here. We're at global government now. Uh, when they're saying they're going to have some world court in the Netherlands that they'll take anybody they want to, to. Um, these are the, in fact, I was reading some of the talks that, that they've given and they've released that the Bohemian Grove has discussed, and it's all population control, world courts. You're talking 20 years ago. So definitely some stuff's going on here that's pretty important. But is it the ultimate um, um, elitist retreat? I would imagine those we, we don't even know the names of. This is probably just one more steering committee where they bring in a lot of underlings and high-level corporate chieftains that really aren't the upper top echelon, make them feel important, and then implement some type of strategy. There, from the stories I've read and things that happen, I mean, it is pretty well documented that people run around naked, they, ha they have orgies, they go into town and have orgies, and these are world leaders. I've got a serious problem with that. It, it, just by the very nature of how this, to me, Bohemian Grove is probably a way to compromise people. You want to be in the New World Order Club, uh, it's like a big kid fraternity. And just like in fraternities, you have to do weird things. Here, you probably do weird things. But I got a problem with governors and presidents and prime ministers and corporate chieftains running around and doing this uh, when they have uh, so much power over what happens in the public domain. Uh, they have a responsibility uh, to, to, to disclose what they're doing. So I think it is important, like you were saying, to somehow try to maintain some security and not be way out in the open uh, because they'll call in a bunch of security. I hear, like he often is. I hear he really enjoys himself here. <laughs> I think Henry Kissinger will be here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, if I got a stink detector, we'll be able to find out where he's at. He's... Oh, it's like everything evil you can imagine, Kissinger's always involved in it. Isn't he a Republican, though? I'm not a Republican. That's the point I keep making. This whole Democrat-Republican deal is a complete... People always go back to that, though. Probably like in your country, you've got Labor and you've got the Tories over there, and it's all the same people behind closed doors. It's just a big joke. And your, your, your leadership, our leadership, it's all the same people. I mean, it, it's a... You do see a fight going on, but it's two different management teams of the same system, you know, bidding for control. What I call them the CEO jobs of Slavery Incorporated. Do you worry for Alex, Violet? Um, I do. I just, uh, because Alex gets so impassioned by what he's doing that sometimes I'm afraid that he might be a little bit, you know, reckless or... Uh, maybe a little bit too fearless. Um, I worry about Alex when he drives down the street to come home. You know, especially I used to worry about him when he had a, uh, you know, come home every night from the same, you know, radio studio at the same time in the same car. Um, and, you know, I worry about him sometimes when he's late getting back in the studio and he doesn't give me a call. I mean, you know, he is putting himself out there, but I think the fact that he's in the public eye as much as, the, as he is really, you know, keeps him safe to a certain degree. So maybe something like this is, yeah, well, you know, um, people might not necessarily know where he is right now, you know, people that listen to the radio or whatever, so it's maybe a little bit more risky and it's a little creepy at night up here in the woods, you know. And you're definitely not dangerous. Mm -hmm. You're not going to do anything stupid this weekend. Well, uh, I mean, dangerous to what? Dangerous to myself? Are these people dangerous? They certainly may be, but I'm, I'm completely nonviolent when it comes to just going out there and trying to get the information. That's what I'm trying to do. I mean, I'm an activist first and foremost, but also a journalist uh, in that uh, I'll make some jokes and speculate occasionally because I'm a radio talk show host. But when I say something that I believe, I have to be uh, on target about it. But uh, dangerous? I'm definitely dangerous to corrupt bureaucrats and their financial bosses uh, that would like to control the American people on the planet. But not in a violent way. Not in a violent way. And long before global government came out in the open in the last four or five years, uh, they were conditioning the public that anyone that talks about global government is a kook, a weirdo, a terrorist, a racist. And now they're out on the nightly news saying global government's here, you better accept it, we're getting rid of juries, um, all across the planet, uh, the IMF, the World Bank, uh, basically runs things now, the WTO decides what you can buy and sell and trade on the international market. But see, they've preconditioned us that it doesn't exist. They've preconditioned us that 
anybody that talks about this stuff and who is against it is a kook or a racist because it doesn't exist. And then everybody's decided, well, I'm going to be culturally cool. I want to be in style. I want to be accepted. So even when they're hearing the news admit it and tell us how great it is, they've already pre-positioned it psychologically that it's not acceptable, it's not kosher to discuss it. Do you see the, the tactic they're using there? Mm -hmm. Five years ago, I would laugh when I heard about black helicopters. I would say, I'm about taxes, I'm about corruption, I'm about you know, getting local control back, I'm about states' rights, you know, everything's going, coming under federal control. I was pretty mainstream, what you'd call so-called conservative. Then I saw the light with black helicopters started going into North Carolina, I started going into Florida, they fired into an all-night restaurant in Miami, just training, firing bullets into a place where people were eating. Uh, they started burning buildings, police chiefs started throwing them out of their town, San Antonio. All this started happening, and I said, whoa, this is real. And then I realized that I was preconditioned, even as a so-called conservative uh, person who, was, who understood that the media lied, I didn't realize how thick the propaganda was. That they preconditioned us before they released something on us, that it, number one, doesn't exist, in our minds with classic doublethink, but then it can re-exist at the same time if they say it does and it's good. So it's, it's literally George Orwell's doublethink, and, and one has to have it to stay sane in this world. Well, I refuse to be a part of it. I mean, the news every day, black helicopters are a joke, they're stupid, the culture, commercials, movies. At the same time, almost every month in this country, they're attacking and terrorizing some town with burning buildings and terror. And I don't want to be part of their sick control freak system. I don't like these degenerate, inbred, uh, New World Order crowd people. They're not going to run my life. They're not going to control me. And I'm going to try to expose them. And I think we've had some success doing that. Oh, look how pretty it is. Uh huh, sure is pretty. Mike, you enjoying yourself? Yeah. A lot, a lot uh, less spooky during the daytime. It's all foggy. Yeah, we're going to take our British friends uh, down into the forest uh, a little bit later tonight. Let them gallivant in the werewolf ridden woods. I'm joking. They'll have me on there. Alex Jones, radio talk show host, believes werewolves infest Northern California. <laughs> They've been seen dancing with grizzly bears. Small pixies have been even witnessed playing violin for George Bush. Don't know what to make of uh, what's going to happen. I can't even begin to imagine what we're going to discover when I infiltrate tomorrow and try to get the uh, cremation of care. We're very close to the gateway to Bohemian Grove now. The first set of uh, gates and security. They have a small guard check at the front and then they have a larger second one. Not a through road. Get a shot of that. guard gate right over there, a small guard gate, and then back further, an even more elaborate guard gate with surveillance cameras, you name it. Not a through road, ladies and gentlemen, right up here in Northern California. How you doing, sir? Okay. Cam Baker? Yeah. Oh, I'm Alex Jones. Awesome. I make documentaries. Uh, I'm just curious, uh, what do you think about Bohemian Grove? I used to work there. You used to work there? Yeah. And now you work at Camp Meeker? No, I don't work. Yeah, I live in Camp Meeker. Oh, you live there? Yeah. Well, that's great. Uh, did you ever watch The Cremation of Care? Um, no. No. What'd you do at the... I just, I just worked there. But, I mean, yeah. you, you never saw them march around in the red robes? And no, march? no. Oh, really? That doesn't go on? Know, but yeah, I get it. <laughs> okay. Thanks. What have you guys heard about Bohemian Grove? Oh, I don't know. A bunch of rich people, right? Have you ever heard about the 40-foot stone owl and the mock human sacrifice? I uh, heard about it a little bit, yeah. Roll that window Not down. Yet. We're going to talk to you. Hold on. What's going around here? I don't know. Oh, yeah? So what have you heard about the... Oh, I just read stuff about it in the paper. I don't know. Some people don't like it. They protested or something weird. But what about the 40-foot stone owl and the mock human sacrifice? You say you heard something about that? Well, just what I read about in the paper. Oh, the paper admitted that? Well, no, I don't know if they admitted it. They just said people go protest it. 
It supposedly happens. Sounds kind of weird. Does sound weird to me. Yeah. Why you guys? What are you guys? What are you guys doing? This TV show or something? We're just having fun. Oh yeah. <laughs> this town isn't like Children of the Corn or anything, is it? Oh no, nothing like that. I'm sure. I don't know. Though. Supposedly, lots of people go there. Some kind of weird event. I don't know. You guys know anything about it? You don't. Huh? What would you say if we told you that they sacrifice a human in effigy and mock? to a 40-foot stone owl in black and red and silver cloaks. Sounds kind of different. Do you think it's good to have... Bull talks you down. <laughs> do you think it's good to have so-called so world leaders secretly engaging in pagan activities? Uh, I can't say it's that great, no. Why would you have a problem with that? Well, I don't know. It could be all right. Depends how you look at it. A kind of relativist worldview, huh? Yeah. Got to sacrifice care to the winds, huh? Yeah. I don't know. It could just be for fun or they could really be weird. They run around naked. Run freak around out. naked and freak out. There you go. Have you heard that? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, to tell you the truth, here's a funny story. What if you heard? Okay, go ahead. No, 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 this is the truth. A couple years ago, I was down the road, <laughs> just down Yar, past Camp Meeker, and I was stopped with a friend of mine. Now, Camp Meeker's right outside the Bohemian Grove. <coughs> That's an affirmative. Yes. And we were uh, we were down the road, and uh, we had we had, we were stopped there uh, because we were just having a cigarette, hanging out, um, taking a break, and uh, some Secret Service men actually pulled up behind us and asked us what we were doing, why we were there. This is true. And they were like, "What what are you guys doing? Where are you at? Why are you park here? What's going on?" And asked us a whole bunch of questions. Oh, what our names were, who we were affiliated with, where we lived, all kinds of stuff. Sort of interrogated us. Did you answer their questions? Totally. I don't know. We always hear there's like big, fat, rich guys with prostitutes there. Really? Yeah. What about, about the what about the owl and the rituals? Uh, I don't know anything about it. Never heard about the rituals? Rituals. Uh, Ritual nothing. killing of a human sacrifice of a human? Nope. Never heard what of it. What would you think if that was going on? I think it was pretty weird. Wouldn't be that surprised. I mean, it is our government after all. Hey, thanks for talking to us, bud. Yo. Hey, I like your shirt. Declaration of Independence. Yeah. All right, man. Take care. All right. We're talking about the Bohemian Grove and trying to see what locals think about it and how it's all secret and all these fat cats there and the supposed strange rituals that go on. Are you a local? No, but she is. What do you think about the Bohemian Grove? Uh, well, um, I don't know what to call it. It offers a lot of employment. It offers a lot of employment? Mm -hmm. What's going on there? What kind of rituals do they do there? I don't know. We're talking to locals about what the rumors are. What are the rumors? About a big 40-foot stone owl and simulated human sacrifice. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that, but there, it's, it's politicians that come that, uh, that vacation there. And It'd be really weird if politicians right? were, were acting like they were sacrificing people, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah. No, you, can tr you can't trust politicians, you know. Oh, really? They might be doing it, huh? Oh, they might, yeah. Who knows? <laughs> the politicians, you know. I hear you, bud. Hey, good talking to you. <laughs> right. Appreciate it. You guys take care. Good luck. Hey, those, are those are some pretty flowers. Yeah, those are sweet peas. Those are real, folks. Peas. Yeah, they're real. <laughs> you guys have a good, good one. You Enjoy too. The weather. Yeah? Yeah, I'm, this area is in trouble. Yeah, we are. We it's are. in big trouble. No, this is a wonderful area of the country. We're just asking locals uh, what they think of the Bohemian Grove. The Bohemian Grove is a wonderful place. Have you been there? Yeah, I've been in there a bunch of times. Oh, oh, oh. What, did you work there? Or Worked there, yeah. Yeah. Is, you know when it's no, the most wonderful time? Mm. Is when nobody's there. <laughs> oh, it's a beautiful area? Yeah, yeah, very beautiful. Uh, it's what, got big trees. Have you ever been there for the cremation but of care? You, no. So you've never been there for the rituals? No. You ever heard about them? Yes. What have you heard they do, sir? Nothing. they got that tree that looks like an owl. Tree that looks like an owl? Tree or rock, or it's, it's a carving or... It's where the stage is. But have you heard what they do during that? During the no, I have no idea what they do. During what would that. you say if we told you they they burn a human being in effigy? They don't really do it. They burn it in effigy. For, I don't know what that means. Well, they have like a dummy that looks like a person under a black blanket. Huh? They take it up there and burn it. Oh, I don't know. Pretty weird. Huh? Pretty weird. Yeah, I've never seen that. How long you lived around here? Uh, I don't know. I'm how old am I? 
20, 20 40 years. years. Yeah. Really? All your whole life? Yes. What's your name, sir? My name is Raul. Vital Lizards? Yeah, this is Vital Roots. How long has Vital Roots been here? A couple years. A couple years? Yeah. The Bohemian Grove? Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of politicians, a lot of big wigs making a lot of big decisions. Oh, really? Do you think it's good that they get together in secret and make all these so-called decisions? Do I think it's good? Yeah. No, of course not. Do you? What about the rituals? Have you heard anything about the rituals that go on? Oh. Well, there's all kinds of rumors about rituals that go on there. What type of uh, rumors have you heard? I don't, don't make me go there. <laughs> Please. Come on. We're trying to talk to some locals. I'm just uh -huh. wondering. It's interesting. Well, I, I really don't know that much about it. You know, I've just what I've read in books. There's books out about it. Oh, you've read I, books on it, huh? I had a book that was published in 1956 that was written about some of the rituals. Because now it's been going on for 120 plus yeah. years. Yeah. I think they said they just had their 120th something anniversary. Yeah. What would you say if I told you that there's a 40 foot stone owl and that they burn a human being in effigy, not in real life, but in I would, effigy? I wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe it? Nah. I think it's a bunch of garbage. So you doubt there's a stone owl and you doubt that they... Well, I wouldn't doubt there's a stone owl. Maybe there's a stone owl, but I wouldn't think that that's kind of... You know, rumors just... It's rumors. You know, what the, rumor, the word implies, pretty much. Just a conspiracy. Yeah, it's just a bunch of hearsay. Pure conspiracy theory. Okay, whatever. Um, what have you heard about the Bohemian Grove? It's where um, all of the, like... FBI and um, you're talking about the Bohemian yeah. Grove. Yeah, um, it's like the uh, um, quote unquote elite and uh, presidential retreat. Have you heard about the rituals that go on there? No, I haven't. Uh, well, the, uh, the people who have more money than the rest of us in the world are um, a bit different. They're stingy. They want to hoard it all for themselves. And they think they're gonna go to heaven they're not because they don't know how to provide or do as Jesus told them to. What would you say if I told you that they sacrifice a human in effigy before a giant 45 to 50 foot stone owl? I would say that's probably why they're going to hell. This Australian we met yesterday, he's been here for three years, and he says that about two, three months ago, the whole you know place heard that? was saturated with men in black, because FBI, Secret Service, and everything going up and down the roads, clear. checking everything, checking houses, everything for bombs and stuff, and then they all disappeared, and they were looking out for undesirables in the area who were persuaded to go. That was his story. And he now we're going to, to him. And, now, and now we're going to infiltrate. Um, I think we should go and see what we can see. The, the public has a right to know. They do. The public may have, may have a right to know, but the people in this cafe, I think, shouldn't, shouldn't know. I agree. <laughs> well, you've got to go in up the, the road that says no through road, because we've got to sit in the car and get a shot of you going up the road. So you've got to go in. You've got to be the guinea pig. But you're a brave man, Alex, aren't you? I'd say, no so. problem, yeah. <laughs> so that's cool. I wouldn't ask. I wouldn't ask a man who wasn't as brave as you. All right, it's no big deal. I'm just gonna. Uh, I'm just gonna go in and uh, make sure everything goes good. Mm -hmm. My only concern is figuring out the right type of baggage to carry this in. I'll show a still shot camera. Well, I personally would recommend that you um, wired yourself up with your um, with your. Um, What's it called? Hidden camera. Yeah, your hidden camera that, that's in the shape of a pager. Problem is, we got some stuff on last night. We checked it out, but it's very unwieldy. Not trustworthy. Right. I can just get in the woods with this. It's over. Mm, that's true. And even if I... See, that, I, I'm going early now. I'm probably going about 3.30 with Mike, and we'll just hang out inside. In case they throw me out, I'm, I'm still getting back in the property. Oh, so you're going you're gonna to go in way before Rick gets here? Yeah. Ah, okay, well, cool. Well, we'll just sit in the car. But, but I mean, you, you understand why. Not because I want to hang out in there all day. It's because I've got to get in. Because if they catch me, then I'm going to got to sneak back in. Mm hmm Yeah. I will not be stopped. <laughs>
You know, I went to, um, I went with uh, Big Jim Tucker from the Spotlight to uh, a Bilderberg meeting last year. But that was my first time, and we, we got chased away by men in, men in dark glasses. And, you know, I was a bit scared then. But I feel safe with you, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tucker's a good rider. Oh, yeah, I like Tucker. It was the night of July 15th, 2000. Mike Hansen and I were about to attempt the first ever successful infiltration of the Bohemian Grove. Others have tried and failed. No one has ever actually made it in and out with video evidence. After careful planning, we decided the best tactic would be to insert ourselves about a half mile from the main entrance into the heavily wooded area entering the gorge by stealth and getting into the main parking area. From there, we posed as Bohemian Club members, thus entering the inner sanctums of the New World Order. No, no, I got it, honey. <laughs> okay, here we go. Well, that's good, yeah, that's good, Alex. Careful, baby. Okay. I don't want you to go anywhere. Shh. Don't be safe. Don't worry about it, guys. Come on. Be careful, Mike. God bless. Yeah. Pray for us. Keep the evil off of us. Be careful. Walk on up here for a second. When's the next shuttle coming? Inside the Bohemian Grove. We're actually not inside yet, Mike. Well, we're in the parking lot. That's pretty. Yeah. Aren't they the biggest? Oh, they are. They're the yeah. biggest, like, living thing, I think, aren't they? Oh, yeah. They're very, they're incredibly large. There's one up there that you can drive a car on top of one. You know? On top of it, yeah. lying down? Yeah. That you can actually. Well, they used to have the one you could drive through. And that's also there. That's up there. Boy, it's nice when that cool wind hits you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Make me make, make it. Make it. Okay. Yeah. How much did the road cost? This, this thing? No, the road. The rope. The rope. Did, did oh, that. Oh, rope. Oh, rope. It was uh, 88. Yeah, I thought you said rope. Not yeah. Rope. yeah, that's what I thought. I saw rope and rope. Yeah. Right. Can't hear anything with wind. The... <laughs> Look at this thing's seen some years. Pretty nice, actually. Yeah. yeah. This is the oldest one, isn't it? Yeah. Other than maybe that little red one. Yeah. Bye bye. I think when you go to heaven, they have buses like this. Here. 
<laughs> Thank you. So I am. Oh, no, go ahead. Let's see if we got one out here. Yeah, is there another one coming? That Marty thing was like... We don't have time in the documentary to show you an entire tour of the 2,700 acre compound in the middle of the gorge. Besides the fact we didn't even have time to see but about 20% of it in between dodging security personnel. Unfortunately, we were using digital tapes that were one hour. Several of the confrontations were not caught on tape. We had sheriffs, deputies, secret service, you name it, question us on who we were. We just told them we were with the hillbillies. That's where the bushes stay. You know, because we've got Texas accents. Close back to the corner right over there. Come on! Oh, there they are, our friend. Yeah. yeah, how's it going? Good. Here's just one of many signs sporting French with skulls adorned with other trappings of death. We also saw signage with Latin and other ancient languages. Now we're about to let you see a little bit of what's going on with the great owl. Getting bold. This is the owl. I'm getting this, Allie. Right. Let's get out of here. I like that. Right. Here you can see the bottom of the stone owl with the altar and the eternal flame, a Aladdin lamp style urn that continually burns year around, we're told. And here's a side shot from about 30 yards away of Moloch, the Canaanite deity to which children were sacrificed to in Babylon. And yet another slowed down close shot. Again, the internal flame burning, the altar, uh, the bottom extremities of the 40 plus foot stone deity. And uh, there is a shot of its head as well. Again, we've slowed down this video because we only actually had about five seconds of it on our hidden cameras so you can have a chance to get a closer look at it. You will see it during the ceremony. Speaking of the ceremony, we were on the left-hand side of the lake about 150 yards downstream 
beneath those large redwood trees. Much of the ritual you're going to witness took place on the right-hand side of the lake and at the northern tip beneath Moloch. Keep in mind the scale of the idol compared to those giant redwood trees. It's at least 45 feet tall. Now the daytime vantage you're witnessing is basically the vantage that we shot the ceremony from at night. This is America, and it's been going on for 120 plus years in Northern California. This is not some new fad. We're talking about something deadly serious with its roots in ancient history. We had already been questioned three separate times by the Bohemian Club Security, Secret Service, and Sonoma County Sheriff's Department. To evade discovery, we decided to try for one of the more remote areas of the camp, according to our map, the most southerly side, and a lookout point, an observation deck over the Russian River. While Mike Hansen was watching for the sheriff's deputies that were down the path and over the bridge in a guard shack, I began to shoot the video you just witnessed. After we turned the camera off, one of the Sonoma County Sheriff's deputies showed up and began asking us why we were filming. We calmly told him we were just sightseeing as members of the Bohemian Club. The point that has to be made here, though, is they do have hidden cameras because there's no way that they would have been able to witness us videotaping from where the guard shack was located. And then upon walking back by the guard shack, we actually witnessed banks of television screens and wires leading up into the redwoods and disappearing. Also visible from the observation deck is the famous sunning area for the establishment lackeys and their pomps. Here you can see some of the fine carpeting out on the floaty. The long history of men enjoying themselves has even been written about in the gossip column of the San Francisco Chronicle, writing that a man on his own often gets invited back to the camp by gay bohemians. Even 100-year-old annals have admitted the homosexual activities. After escaping the sheriff's department, Mike and I traveled high into the hills to wait until dark in the beginning of the cremation of care ceremony. Before the cremation of care, all the Bohemian Club members begin a massive feast of revelry. <laughs> He's so pissed off at me. After the feast, cult members 
travel from the main dining area under the trees out to the eastern side of the lake where they congregate and prepare themselves to properly thank their deity. Again, the 3,000 plus year old Moloch. <laughs> The occult activities are coming up, and then after the actual ritual, we're going to give you some more of the history surrounding it. But first off, I wanted to draw your attention to the program that was given out to the spectators or the viewers. I guess an occultist would call them novices uh, who actually watched as the priest uh, and their supporters engaged in this ancient rite. Now you're looking at a little demon called PJ that was on the front of the actual program. It's kind of an Hieronymus Bosch style. He's got a little broom and a dustpan and he's sweeping something up. Now even more shocking is the figure of a human body burning in the flames. In fact, I've shown it uh, to people that are experts in anatomy, to actual doctors, and they say that the anatomical size is that of a baby or small child. Notice how large the cranium is in comparison to the torso, that is the ribs. Understand, ladies and gentlemen, this is from the program itself given out to the establishment lackeys witnessing the sinister activities. Remember, in Babylon and Tyre, they would throw their children into fiery pits. Look at the size of the hands compared to the rest of the body. Only children show these anatomical details. Now, of course, it's been airbrushed in, but it shows the psychology. Now, this is the only skull we actually caught on tape. We've blown it up for you over one of the major meeting houses. Of course, it's not a real skull. It was extremely oversized up on the signage. The point we're trying to make here is the entire compound was literally infested with symbols of death, skulls, owls, and long last, here it is, the cremation of care unveiled. <laughs> As we sat there in the darkness, not knowing what we were about to see in the gathering crowd, suddenly across the small lake, we saw a carriage with men in black and brown cloaks, robes in front and in back, bearing a bound body. Remember, it was a hidden camera and at somewhat of an angle. Something particularly pleasing was happening for the Bohemian Grovers with whatever developed with that crowd uh, of men in black and brown and the bound body on the back of the buggy. They drove behind big black tarps they had hanging out of the trees. There was lots of smacking on lips of in, in bizarre enjoyment by the crowd. We still haven't made out exactly what was going on, but that a real sacrifice may have actually been developing according to some occult experts. All the time in the darkness across the small lake, uh, the men in black were doing something behind the dark curtains hanging from the redwood trees. Then after about 10 more minutes of music, suddenly all around the owl activity began. Here is the main central part of the ritual. The owl is in his leafy temple. That all within the grove be reverent before him. If 
up your heads, O ye trees, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting spires. For behold, here is Bohemian shrine, and holy are the pillars of this house. Bohemians, with the ripple of waters, song of birds, such music as inspires the sinking soul, do we invite you into midsummer's joy. The sky above is blue, the soul with stars, the forest floor is heaped with fragrant drift. The evening's cool kiss is yours. The campfires glow. Birth of rosy fingers gone. Shake off your sorrows with the city's dust and cast to the winds the cares of life. Let memory bring back the well loved names of gallant friends who knew and loved this girl. Dear boon companions of the long ago, I let them join us in this ritual. Not a place be empty in our midst. Oh, beauty's vassals, who hold in this gray autumn of the world her springtime in your heart, a ten-hour tale. Gather ye, forest folk, and cast your spell over these mortals. Touch their world-blind eyes with fairy unbelief. Open their eyes and blow all the memories of yesterday and seal the gates of sorrow. It is a dream, and yet not all a dream. Joel Care and all of his works are but a dream. As vanished Babylon and Goodly Tyre, so shall they also vanish. But the wilding rose blows on the broken battle with some tire, and walks rend the stones of Babylon. For beauty is eternal, and we bow to beauty everlasting. For lasting happiness, return to one alone, and she surrounds you now. Great nature, refuge of the weary heart, and only balm for breasts that have been bruised. She has cool hands for every favorite brow, and gentlest silence for the troubled soul. Counsels her most wise. She healeth well, having such ministries as calm and sleep. She is ever faithful. Other friends may fail, but seek ye her in any quiet place. Smiling, she will rise and give to you her kiss. So must she come as children. Little children that believe, nor ever doubt her beauty and her faith, nor deem her tenderness and change or die. Our funeral 
funeral pyre awaits the corpse of care. Here you have the boatman, his face was painted up like a skull, bringing the bound body across the water. Again, we'll have enhanced video of this later. And uh, let's see if you can pick up all of the different occultic meanings uh, in the speeches you're about to hear. Oh, man. 
Empire shall have its will of thee. Be gone, do care, and all the winds make merry with thy dust. Hail, fellowship's eternal flame. Once again, midsummer sets us free. <laughs> Now we're going to get to some enhanced video, and we'll go play by play through some of the more occultic statements, like we shall read the sign in your burned effigy, the bound body. That's exactly what the Druids actually did. They would roast cats, uh, goats, oxen, horses, and watch the pain of how they died, and from this extract some type of mystical energy force or power, and also be able to tell the future. Our Bohemia, we beseech thee, grant us thy counsel. Upon further research of the ritual you've just witnessed, it becomes clear. It is a mixture of the Babylonian Canaanite cult of Moloch fused with ancient druidic rites where you have the female side of Satan, which they first call out to in the she and then towards the horn god with the he, mixed with Masonic rites from Scotland. It's very likely that many of the 1,500 to 2,000 member crowd had really no idea what they were actually watching because it was thinly veiled. Here we have some more enhanced video as the boatman, again with his face painted up like a skull, pulls his boat uh, across the small lake towards the high priest with the red of his cloak visible with his hand outstretched as if he is pulling the damned soul towards him as they throw off their cares, their conscience for what they have to do in the world. Also, you have the arrangement of the circle of higher level priests around him, the high priest in lighter colors, and then the outer rooms of red, and then those in black. Uh, this is consistent uh, with the darker workings of the occult, not just with the Western uh, countries, but also worldwide. Now, when you see that black edge coming to the field, that's because we zoomed in on the video, and many times the picture was almost out of the screen, so that's the edge of the field or the view of the camera. We'll get back to more enhanced video of the ritual here in just a minute. But remember PJ, the little demon down in the corner, the left-hand corner of the program, sweeping up the ashes with little horns? And how can you forget this, the image of a human body burning on the altar? 
Again, this is what they were handing out to those that were witnessing uh, these macabre activities. But again, from Babylon on into ancient England, the word bone fire, meaning human sacrifices being thrown into fiery pits, turned into today's bond fire. After the sacrifice, members of the cult would sweep up the ashes of the victim and use them in future rituals. One of the things that is extremely obvious by looking at the program handed out to Bohemian Club members is the person creating the program had a deep understanding of the occult. There you see the funeral pyre burning uh, with the effigy of a human, or it could be real, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, there's been a lot of strange going-ons in that area of Northern California, but this is what the establishment is into uh, right here in America, the cremation of care. And this was July 15, 2000. The 
these people are deadly serious. Those taking part in the ceremony. Another point, the pyrotechnics you're seeing going off uh, were being released from beneath little rod iron crosses about a foot and a half tall. Also, notice the screams of pain coming uh, from the sacrifice. One of the facets of the ritual that goes deeply into the occult, again, we've already mentioned the druids at their bonfires or bonfires throwing, throwing bodies into fiery pits after ritually cutting their hearts out or slitting their throats. They talk about reading the sign in the burning effigy, reading the sign. Again, research your history books on the occult, even the Encyclopedia Britannica on what the Druids would engage in. Uh, this is just unbelievably macabre and evil. So shall we burn thee once again this night, and in the flames that eat thine effigy, we shall read the sign. Well, we're going to confront George Bush on Bohemian Grove. George Bush Jr. They've been announcing on CNN, MSNBC, on television, last night and today, for the first time in history, they're admitting it, why the vice presidential decision was made at Bohemian Grove. George Bush Sr., the former president, and Golden Bowen, and others. So now they're just throwing it in everybody's face. Uh, we've broken the story over a week ago. July 15th, we were in Northern California. They're trying to ignore it. George Bush is down here at the uh, governor's mansion across the street from the Capitol, about to announce Dick Cheney uh, as his vice presidential running mate. We're going to go blow the party for him and get the information out to people. We're not going to stop. We're getting in their face. I want to make it clear that I'm neither Republican nor Democrat. But the facts speak for itself. George Bush Sr., Jr., even their grandfather Prescott Bush were all members of the Bohemian Club. So we dropped by to, well, let them know that we're fully aware of their activities. This is massive. This is how George Bush dresses up, right here. We got them on tape. This is how they dress up, right here, in red and black robes. A little more pointy, though, like the Klan. We got them on tape. This is how George Bush dresses, right here when he's in the Bohemian Grove. This is how he dresses. We've already put it on television. Absolutely disgusting. George Bush isn't a conservative. He's not for family values. He is nothing but a Luciferian twit. A Luciferian twit, Bush. You may think you can feed on the human population. We say no here. We're on the march. The empire's on the run. Long live the Constitution and death to the new world order. We stand firm. We stand strong for America against your and we're going to get this story out, and we're going to continue to push it, because the truth will not be hidden that you are part of a 3,000-plus-year-old devil cult for the owl falling from Babylon as well as Tyre. We have the high priest admitting all this. We have it on videotape. It is documented. It is documented. A Luciferian devil worshiper. Already people all over Austin are talking about it. We're not afraid of you. We're not afraid of your minions. In fact, we're waking 
your minions up every day with the hardcore evidence. We know your father met 11 times with Bill Clinton in 91. The whole thing was stage managed. We understand you've been helping to sell this country out, boys. And we're going to expose you and your Luciferian rights. We have the video tape. This is a massive story. One of the stories of the century. One of the stories of the century. How you had the Luciferian Pope for 121 years in Northern California. I went inside for the cremation of care. I witnessed the entire debacle. Many of these Secret Service agents have been in, no doubt, protecting these people inside of this system. There, there had to be, in my belief, a, an occultist, a deep occultist, who designed each of the elements of this ceremony. It wasn't just a bunch of guys sit together at a bar and said, hey, let's have a good time, the cremation of care, uh, and why don't we do this or that. I believe it was purposely designed, each element in its turn, uh, for, for what they did. No doubt about it. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been watching Dark Secrets Inside Bohemian Grove. The facts we've shown in this film are absolutely documented. I would only hope that the people of the world realize the organized evil we're dealing with at almost every level. Republican, Democrat, you name it. They're all working on the same team. Ladies and gentlemen, it's called world government, the new world order, dehumanization. It's not a joke. It's deadly serious. Unfortunately, they've been breeding societies to think everything's a joke. I'm here to tell you truth is stranger than fiction. Purchase additional copies of this film, or to see dozens of other films and important books, be sure and visit InfoWars.com or PrisonPlanet.com, or to order, simply call toll-free 1-888-253-3139.